died. Mm -hmm. And as they came there, they were met by these two men who stood in shiny garments. And they were afraid and they bowed their heads and then angels asked them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that kind of caught them right there, the living. Mm -hmm. They were coming to a place to do the work that is necessary when death has happened. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know that life had taken place in the tomb. Mm -hmm. They were coming to a place to take care of Jesus' body, but he already had a new body. Mm -hmm. They were coming to a place looking to just commemorate that Jesus had been there, but he had been there and left already. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think that we live our lives like the women that early morning. Mm -hmm. We have the victory. But we walk around carrying spices. Mm -hmm. We have the victory, but we walk around as if we're among the dead. Come on. We we have the victory, but people don't know it because where we hang out and the things we do and the things we possess and the things that seem important to us are dead things. Mm -hmm. Because when our neighbors see us, they don't see us as people that have hope mm -hmm. because we're right in the same boat as they are. But I want you to know that this Resurrection Sunday, we need to live our lives as if we have the victory. Amen. You see, when I turn on the evening news, I see people that are being defeated, people that think that everything is bad. And it seems that way because the enemy would make you think that everything is just bad and everything is just hopeless. But Jesus came and walked this earth. Jesus came and went to Calvary so that we could have hope. He got up out that tomb so that we could come one day and tell people there is hope in Jesus. That when we say there is power in the name of Jesus, it's not just something we're saying from lyrics that we're in a songbook, but it's power that we have experienced in our personal lives. Is there anybody here that has experienced the power of Jesus in your life. Yeah. Jesus had gotten up with his new body, but the people that were his followers were coming to his tomb expecting to find him there. But the angel told them, he is not here, but is risen. If we have power and if we have victory, there's some places that we've been that people should not be able to find the same. There's some places where we live where people should not find us living anymore. There's some things that we've said that people should not hear us saying anymore. If we if we have risen, you see, because we have been changed by the power of Jesus. Yeah. The scripture says, Paul said, if you then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. In other words, there is a victory lifestyle that should be your lifestyle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For instance, when the slaves were free, it would be kind of sad to go to a plantation where everybody was free and see them still living as slaves. Uh -huh. But people did it. It would be a sad thing to see people just stuck. And I think a lot of times in our lives, we become stuck in the ways that we are supposed to be free from. We become stuck in the ways that Jesus has not asked us to be stuck in. And so two things I want to point out about this being risen, that if Christ is risen, that we have the victory. The first thing is this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Life. If you are following Jesus, you are following a pathway of life. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the thing that kind of sets, it kind of gives us light on what's happening in our world. If I see somebody that's doing things that brings death and destruction, they could not be connected with Jesus because Jesus is life. Yeah. And so that's why I, I have a problem when people say, you know, um, I, you know, I got saved and I'm trying to get myself together, but 
I'm still selling drugs to people, or I'm still doing things that destroy the lives of people. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing things that bring sorrow to people because Jesus is not one that brings sorrow. He brings peace. He brings hope. He brings joy. Yeah. He brings love. He brings yeah. happiness. And if your life is not bringing those things, then that means that you're not living a life of victory. You can say we have the victory, but your life is not reflecting the victory. Amen. Amen. So the first thing is that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. My life should be lined up with the truth that is in Jesus Christ. In other words, the truth that Jesus talked about is the truth that I should follow. And people don't want to hear the truth. This is why Jesus was crucified. Because he claimed to be the son of God. He claimed to be the king of the Jews. When they asked him if he was the king, he said, you say that I am. He never denied it. And so therefore, he, he verified his claim by the resurrection. When Jesus got up that morning, that real people had to realize that he was truly the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. That he was not just another mere man. That he got up with all power in his hand. But if I say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then I need to know, secondly, that when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. Amen. We have victory because we know that the truth sets us free. You see, we celebrate in this country Juneteenth, and most people didn't know anything about Juneteenth, so people began to really publicize it and make people understand that people in Texas and other parts of the country were not free during the Emancipation Proclamation. Right. But when we say you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It means that my life and the way I live reflects that I know the truth. Uh -huh. But it's not just me knowing the truth. If I have victory, I want the people that I know to have victory. Amen. I want the people in my household to have victory. I want the people in my community to have victory. I want my nation to have victory. It's important for us to know that it's not just that I have the victory, but I live my life so that others can gain the victory too. The women came there and they were bringing spices. They said, he is not here, but he is risen. And then they said, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. I think sometimes as Christians, we need to remember how he spoke to us. You remember the first day when you realized that Jesus wanted you to be his follower? When you said, Jesus, I'm going to make you my savior. I'm going to yield my life to you. I'm going to surrender to you. We have the victory when we remember who we were before we knew Jesus. We have the victory when we remember what we were before we knew Jesus. And we have the victory when we remember what he called us to do. He called us to be a reflection of the kingdom of God. He called us to let people know that there is victory when they see your life. He called us to let people know that there is hope in this world. That there is an answer to every problem and situation if they would simply trust Jesus. I hope that this Resurrection Sunday, that we will leave from here realizing that we have the victory. You know how I know? Because last Resurrection Sunday, we weren't here. Last Resurrection Sunday, there were some folks that were in this earth that are not in the earth today. But God, God kept you and kept me. Amen. God made a way out of no way for you and me. Somehow or another, I know we have victory because the doors of this church are still open. Yeah. Somehow or another, I know that we still have victory because despite our failings and our physical problems and our physical adversities, we're still able to walk into the house of God and give him praise, glory, and honor. It's only because he got up that Sunday morning. 
It's only because he came back from the dead with all power in his hand. Yeah. It's only because he was willing to sacrifice his life so that we could have a new life in Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Yeah. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus turned me around and put me on the right path. I'm so glad that Jesus opened my eyes because I could be like some of the other young black men my age, somewhere incarcerated, somewhere dead, somewhere in a hopeless situation. But Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, opened doors and made a way out of no way for me. And he's done the same for you. If you're sitting here, he's been the one that has directed your path. Open the windows of heaven and poured you out a blessing that you couldn't receive. And sometimes you might think you don't have all the things that you want to have or the things you think you need. But he gave you just enough to make it today. Just enough to make it for today. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. Just know that he's got the day covered for you. I want us to leave out of here today knowing that we have the victory. Because you're going to see some things on the news. You're going to have some situations happen in your life. But in that moment, you need to say, I have the victory. Amen. There's a song we sing in church, I have the victory, hallelujah. I have the victory, hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord, he is Lord. And so we see a world where people don't want to bow to Jesus. But that's okay. I'm going to still live my life and let people know that Jesus saved. Amen. Some people think that Jesus died and he didn't come back, but that's okay. I'm going to live my life so people know that Jesus lives in me, that I serve a risen Savior, and that he's in the world today. I know that he's living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, and I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always there because he lives. He lives within my heart. And people need to see your heart. If Jesus is living in, in your heart, then they can see Jesus. We have the victory. It's a beautiful thing because in this life, we have struggles. We have trials. And the longer you live, the more struggles you have. The longer you live, you realize more and more that you need Jesus. And when you realize that, just tell yourself, we have the victory. As I look out here each and every Sunday, I realize that God has put me in a place with some people that he says, I want you to just serve them and help them to understand about me. Help them to understand that I love them, that I've got their back. And they just need to know that everything they have need of can be found in Christ Jesus. So as you go out this week, if trials come your way, just say to yourself, we have the victory. If the doctor gives you a bad report, just say, we have the victory. If the bill comes and you're trying to figure out where you're going to get the money from the pay, just say, we have the victory. If the children are acting up or the relationship's got problems, just say, we have the victory. Whatever your situation is this week, I can assure you that you have the victory. Because he is risen. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. Persecutions may come with such a heavy weight, but we have this hope. And it's in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one under the sound of my voice. You know where we are in our individual lives spiritually, personally, emotionally. And whatever situation, whatever way we came in these doors, Lord, allow us to leave with the thought on our mind and the hope in our heart that we have the victory. Let us leave the day, Father, realizing that our victory is in Jesus, the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave, the one who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who is soon to return. And I pray, Lord, that he would find us living the life of victory. 
It was in his name we pray with thanksgiving. And our hearts say amen. Amen. And the invitation to Christ this morning. If you are here and you never remember a time in your life where you asked Jesus to come into your heart and to save you, the Bible says, Today is the day of salvation. The day you hear my voice, pardon not your heart. And so we want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10 9 and 10 that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, that we shall be saved. It is with the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. It is the, with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Even this resurrection Sunday morning, we are rejoicing and celebrating the fact that Jesus got up. He got up. He paid the price. Because the truth of the matter is the wages of sin. Sometimes you have to die. Your own sin will be accepted free gift. Of Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. And so if you're not sure you were to die today, where you would spend eternity, we just want to give you an opportunity to come to Christ today. We want to give you an opportunity to know that you know that you know that you will spend eternity with God in heaven. Maybe you're here today and you are already saved, but you are not a member of the church. The Bible says that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You can't bloom until you're planted. Visiting is good, but you need to be a member. If you feel led, if you feel compelled to join Bible Baptist Church of Christ, we encourage you to come. And the last call this morning is for restoration. Maybe you are here because it's Easter, it's Resurrection Sunday morning, and you are saved. Maybe you even have a church home, but you know that you are not living in a way that pleases God and brings glory and honor to his name. If you want to return to him. You want to be restored to the right relationship to him. The Bible says in Jeremiah 3 that he's married to the backslider. He says, just return to me, O wayward children. And so if you fall into one of those categories today, if you need to be saved, if you need to join the church, if you need to be restored, won't you come? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray this prayer for those who are watching virtually and you can't physically come up to the altar. And I'm going to pray this prayer of salvation. And whether you're watching virtually or you're here and you want to be seen, then you pray this prayer with me as we ask Jesus to come into our heart and to save us. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross for my sin. I accept that I am a sinner and I need a savior. Please come into my heart and save me. Make me brand new. Make me like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer that you are saved, once you're saved, you're always saved. And I just want to pray also, Father, I thank you for the word that has gone forth. We thank you that Jesus rose from the grave. We thank you for what you have done in your house this morning. I pray, Father, for everyone under the sound of my voice, for both physically and virtually. And I pray, Father, that you will continue to grow by your spirit, that you will continue to move in the hearts of your people. And we thank you for what you have done here today. We thank you for how you move. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending your son to die for us. And most of all this morning, we thank you that you got up. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.